you, Senator Urquhart, there being no others. Senators, it is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 18th of December 2020 of Major General the Honourable Philip Michael Jeffrey, AC, AO, CVO, MC, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia from 2003 to 2008. I call the Leader of the Government in the Senate, Senator Birmingham. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I seek leave to move a motion relating to the death of former Governor General Michael Jeffrey. Leave granted. Leave is granted. Senator Birmingham. Mr. President, I move that the Senate expresses its deep regret at the death on 18 December 2020 of Major General the Honourable Philip Michael Jeffrey, AC, AO, CVO, MC, former Governor General of Australia and Governor of Western Australia, places on record its gratitude and appreciation of his long and distinguished public service and tenders its profound sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Major General the Honourable Michael Jeffrey was a brave soldier, an intellect, a gentleman and, above all else, a great Australian who served his country with honour and distinction. He leaves behind an impressive legacy, a life of selfless service to our nation. Following a distinguished 38-year career in the Australian Defence Force, Major General Jeffrey was appointed the 27th Governor of Western Australia. He then went on to become the 24th Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia. Major General Jeffrey, Philip Michael Jeffrey, was born in Wooloona, Western Australia, in 1937 to Edna and Phil Jeffrey, and was educated at Cannington and East Victoria Park State Schools and Kent Street High School. At age 16, he left Perth to attend the Royal Military College at Dontroon. Serving the Australian Defence Force in many capacities, he rose to the rank of Major General, retiring in 1993. Throughout his long and distinguished military service, Major General Jeffrey undertook operations in Malaya, Borneo, Vietnam and Papua New Guinea, the latter being a country he would continue to hold a special connection with throughout his life. During a tour of Vietnam as an infantry company commander with the 8th Battalion Royal Australian Regiment, he was awarded the Military Cross for Courageous Action and the South Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. In 1976, he assumed command of the SAS Regiment in Perth and was subsequently promoted to Colonel as the first director of the Army's Special Action Forces. From 1981 to 1983, Major General Jeffrey headed Australia's National Counter-Terrorist Coordination Authority. After being selected to attend the Royal College of Defence Studies in London, he was promoted to Major General, progressing to command the Army's 1st Division and later serving as Deputy Chief of the General Staff, undertaking the responsibility for the day-to-day -day running of a 65,000-person army. Upon Major General, General Jeffrey's retirement from the military, he became the Governor of Western Australia in 1993, particularly lending his efforts to youth programs, for which he would later be awarded a Companion of the Order of Australia for services to the Crown and to the community. Reflecting on his own time in the Army Cadets, Major General Jeffrey was a strong believer in youth groups and making sure that young Australians had the best chance to succeed. With education driving his admiration for the teaching profession, he said, and I quote, what I have found universally is that it is the educational experience that most influences the quality of lives, offers choice, fosters independence and promotes potential. Teachers share the privilege of being able to influence and to inspire I want teaching to be seen and respected as the noble profession, and there are ways in which we can all work together to make that happen. He committed himself, as Governor, to promoting those ideals. Following his retirement as Governor of Western Australia in 2000, he established in Perth a not-for-profit research institute, Future Directions International, whose object is to conduct comprehensive research of important medium to long-term issues facing Australia. It was an embodiment of his lifelong commitment to the betterment of our nation. On 11 August 2003, Major General Jeffrey was sworn in as the 24th Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia. In doing so, he became the first Australian-born Governor-General to have had a full-time military career. Known during his time as Governor of Western Australia to have visited even the tiniest of outback settlements, 
Former Prime Minister John Howard said in the appointment of Major General Jeffrey that he, and I quote, will bring to the post not only a wealth of experience, but also a great ease of manner in dealing with Australians from every part of the community. Then opposition leader Simon Crean, on the appointment of Major General Jeffrey, described him as a man who has served his country in peace and war with distinction and has been recognised with one of his, this country's highest decorations for bravery in battle. Major General Jeffrey saw his time as Governor General as having three distinct functions, constitutional, ceremonial and community, each wielding importance which he fulfilled with distinction. Rather than actively seeking the limelight during his time as our Governor General, Major General Jeffrey focused on communities and was true to his word upon his appointment that, I want to give my total commitment to the Australian people, that I will endeavour to be a Governor General of the people and for the people. As Governor General, he gave an estimated 850 speeches, attended some 1,100 events throughout Australia, hosted over 750 official functions, was patron to around 180 not-for-profit organisations, often visiting them at least once a year, and held Christmas parties for nearly 4,000 special needs children and their carers. Major General Jeffrey believed in nurturing Australia's relationships, developing personal dialogues and friendships across the globe, from visiting King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia to hosting then US President George W. Bush. In 2005, upon attending the 30th anniversary of Papua New Guinea's independence, he was awarded the Honorary Grand Champions of the Order of Lagohu for fostering close relations between Papua New Guinea and Australia. Thousands lined the streets of Wewak to, to greet Major General Jeffrey, where he had served as a battalion commander. He impressed locals by conversing in pidgin, and many of those old soldiers in PNG walked days from their villages to say hello again. In an apt end to his time as Governor-General, Papuan Sergeant Major Michael Pisa, who served under Major General Jeffrey more than 40 years earlier, piped his farewell from office. In retirement, Major General Jeffrey was appointed the first national advocate for soil health by the Gillard government in 2012. In this role, he strove to provide leadership and national strategic direction to the good work being done by soil scientists and landscape managers across Australia. He worked tirelessly from Parliament House to the paddocks of the outback to raise public awareness of the critical role soil plays in underpinning sustainable productivity and helping to meet global challenges, including food, water security and climate change. Highly influential in the role, his impact brought change to attitudes regarding sustainable practices to improve soil health, with farmers more willing to talk about regenerative agriculture and ministers more mindful of implementing policies that support healthy landscapes. I personally remember the thoughtful, considered and diligent way in which Major General Jeffrey approached his role as National Advocate for Soil Health, including in one-on-one -on -one meetings with me and, no doubt, with many other members, senators and ministers. His work ethic was unwavering. Indeed, Major General Jeffrey remained in this role until shortly before his passing. Throughout his extraordinary life, Major General Jeffrey was supported by his wife of 35 years, Marlena. Extraordinary in her own right, Marlena was appointed as Dame of Grace in the Order of St John and awarded the accolade Citizen of Western Australia for her work with so many charities. Admired for her compassion, Marlena was also patron to more than 50 charities during Major General Jeffrey's time as Governor General. Major General Jeffrey often expressed his deep appreciation and affection for Marlena, declaring that he would never have been able to make the types of contributions he did without her support and contribution. A great man with a distinguished career, he remained humble, stating during his time as Governor General, if people can look back at our term in office and say, the Jeffreys did a good job, then that will be good enough for me. By every measure, Major General the Honourable Michael Jeffrey was truly one of Australia's finest. To Major General Jeffrey's wife, Marlena, their three sons, daughter and grandchildren, on behalf of the Australian Government and the Australian Senate, I offer our sincerest condolences. Senator Wong. Thank you, uh, Mr President. And I rise on behalf of the opposition to express our condolences following the passing of follower, former Governor-General, Major-General, the Honourable Michael Jeffrey, 
ACCVIMC at the age of 83, and I begin by conveying the Labor Party's sincere condolences to his wife Marlena, to all of his family and his friends. Michael Jeffrey gave a lifetime of service to Australia. Beginning in the Army as a teenager, he went off on to serve amongst its highest ranks and became a celebrated and respected leader. And the manner in which he carried out this service saw him retained for even higher office, first as the Governor of Western Australia and then, of course, as Governor-General of Australia. And he would also use his profile to advance conservation and improve soil health later in life. Michael Jeffrey started life in December 1937 in Willoona, a small town in the Midwest region of Western Australia, situated in the middle of the state. On the, it, it is on the edge of the Western Desert at the gateway to the Canning Stock Route. From these beginnings, these very Australian beginnings, came one of the mo nation's most significant military leaders and public servants. After growing up in the suburbs of Perth during his, the period of his school education, he left school at the age of 16 to attend the Royal Military College Dun Duntroon and he had an extensive mil military career from 1958 to 1993 and included in that many notable overseas service and command postings. These included operational, uh, serving operationally in the theatres of Malaya, Borneo, Papua New Guinea and Vietnam and in Vietnam his service earned him the Military Cross. In Papua New Guinea, as my colleague Senator Birmingham has indicated, uh, Major General Jeffries commanded the 1st Battalion, the Pacific Island Regiment, and in 2005, the 30th anniversary of independence, he was recognised with Papua New Guinea's highest honour, being made an inaugural recipient of the honour of Grand Camp Companion of the Order of Lugohu, in which, into which he was invested in 2007. He, he was also pivotal in the sustainment of the Special Air Service Regiment. Major General uh, Jeffrey has re received uh, many honours. The first, uh, in 1981, when he became a member of the Order of Australia for service to the Army. 1988, uh, he was appointed an officer of the Order of Australia. He was appointed a companion in, 2000, uh, in 1996 for services as governor and to the community, and in 2000 he was appointed a command of the Royal Victorian Order, which recognises distinguished personal service to the monarch. Michael Jeffrey's mil military career came to an end in 1993, and shortly thereafter he was appointed to the office of governor of Western Australia. He saw as a central component of this role connecting with people across the state. As governor with Mrs Jeffrey, he, he was patron of 170 organisations and they relished the opportunity to be engaged with the community through these roles. Uh, to the extent they reflected Michael Jeffrey's own interests, many of them had an emphasis on developing youth. Major General Jeffrey was grateful for the way in which this vice regal role enabled him to travel all over the states, observing what he called the totality of life from sheep stations to mines to oil rigs to schools and to remote Aboriginal communities. After retiring as Governor in 2000, Michael Jeffrey returned to make his home in Canberra, making the trip from the west to the east coast on the Indian Pacific. But not too long after this, he found himself moving to another and more significant address in the national capital, and in August 2003 he was sworn in as the 24th Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia. He did take office at a time where the then Howard government and in fact the nation needed the role to be filled with someone or by someone who could restore its integrity. It was a challenging time to take on the vice regal position. And he acknowledged this, stating that amidst the difficult circumstances in which the appointment took place, he would give his total commitment to the Australian people that he would seek to carry out the role with dignity and dedication. And he did so. Certainly, he did come to the office with a sound reputation for ethical conduct, a reputation which continued undiminished. In office, Michael Jeffrey sought to engage directly with Australians, directly with those undertaking worthwhile activities in their communities, continuing very much in the manner with which he had approached the role in Western Australia, as Senator Birmingham said, of the people and for the people. He once said, and I quote, the big thing you can do, and there's not enough of it, is looking people in the eye and say thanks. 
saying thanks for making a contribution through being a Meals on Wheels person or a volunteer ambulance driver or a violinist in a youth orchestra. Mindful that it would not be appropriate to stray too closely uh, to into policy matters that were more appropriately the domain of the government of the day, he never th nonetheless sought to use some of his many speeches a year to lend profile to important national and community issues. These range from mental health, the environment, volunteering, the importance of mentoring, to urban planning, local sport and community involvement. This accompanied his acquittal of more formal constitutional duties and responsibilities, such as presiding over member, mem, uh, meetings of the EXCO Federal Executive Council. He had a reputation for interrogating the business thoroughly, and by the end of 2007, the Federal Executive Council had considered some 2,540 agenda items on his watch. With Mrs Jeffrey, he also represented Australia overseas on multiple occasions. My first personal interaction uh, came with uh, Michael Jeffrey came on the 3rd of December 2007, which is a day I shall never forget, because that was the day in which the Governor General of Australia swore in the first Rudd Labor Ministry, and I became the Minister for Climate Change and Water. And the signed certificate hangs in my office in Adelaide, and the signed book plate is in the Bible I keep in my office here in Parliament House. In an interview on his retirement, Michael Jeffrey told a story about that day when the swearing in of the ministry coincided with a tour of the grounds of Government House by a large group of school children. And he recalled that whilst he was inside discussing major issues of state, or certainly engaging in major issues of state, the kids were all waving from outside. So naturally, led by the new Prime Minister and the Governor-General, we all got up and waved back. And he thought of this as being a profoundly Australian thing to do. Originally expected to serve three to four years, Michael Jeffrey completed his term after a two-year extension in August 2008. After leaving Viceregal Office, Michael Jeffrey continued a role to which he had originally been appointed by the Gillard government in 2012 as Australia's first national advocate for soil health. This was an apt role for the boy who grew up in the red earth of the Western Australian outback. And he consulted in that role with thousands of farmers, indigenous land managers, policy makers, students and interest groups across Australia to bring together the Restore the Soil, Prosper the Nation report in 2018. He advocated for our soil, water and vegetation to be declared strategic national assets. And he saw that improving soil health had the potential to have a significant positive impact on our carbon emissions. His passion for restoring Australia's soil, for regenerative farming, farming and exporting Australian knowledge about managing soils in difficult climate lasted until his final months when he relinquished the role. The legacy of his work remains. Retirement from high public office also gave Michael Jeffrey the opportunity to share more time with his children and grandchildren and engage in his hobbies and recreational pursuits, including golf. Michael Jeffrey passed away in December 2020. The first full-time career Australian soldier appointed to the office of Governor-General, he set a standard for diligence and integrity by which those who follow are measured. He was, of course, succeeded in office first by Quentin Bryce, then by Peter Gross, Cosgrove and David Hurley. Reflecting on his predecessor, General Hurley said, As a nation, we give thanks for Michael's extraordinary lifetime of service. He was, by every measure, a great Australian. And so, too, do we in the Senate today pay tribute and give thanks for Michael Jeffrey's service to Australia, to his nation. We express our condolences following his passing, and the opposition again expresses our sympathy to his family and friends. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, President. On behalf of the Australian Greens, I offer my condolences to the family and friends of Major General Michael Jeffrey. As others have noted, Major General Jeffrey has had a distinguished career in defence uh, before serving as Governor of Western Australia and then Governor General of Australia. These are important roles and we thank him for the care and the dignity that he brought to them. But I want to speak very briefly of his long-standing passion for environmental stewardship. He was a committed advocate for land care, for regenerative agriculture and for sustainable vegetation management. He spoke about the value of soil carbon long before it became a government buzzword. He had long discussed the need for agricultural practices to build resilience and adapt to a changing climate. 
I acknowledge his tenacity and the work that he did as national soil advocate to secure the national soils strategy. I hope that the government will respect his legacy. Major General uh, Jeffrey was also someone who understood the importance of time with family in nature and away from the cut and thrust of political life. I was pleased to discover that when asked about his favourite holiday destination, he nominated Stradbroke Island uh, or Manjirabar. That is something that we share. He said of the time spent with his wife and children on Stradi, escaping the sometimes punish punishing schedule of events at Government House, and I quote, just the sight of the white sand and the sparkling blue water lifts the spirits. It is nice, therefore, to have some time to ourselves, and that is one of the major attractions to holidaying at Stradbroke. Days just meander by and we feel part of the local community. We might end the day watching a beautiful sunset, followed by a game of Scrabble. For us, that is bliss, and we have kept coming back uh, over many years. I would encourage as many people as they can to come and uh, also enjoy Minjeriba or Stradbroke Island in my home state of Queensland. I'm sure that the memories of those times together are a comfort to Major General Jeffrey's family. Our thanks to Major General Jeffrey for his years of dedication to governance, environmental protection and sustaining the planet for future generations. Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr President. And as a Senator for Western Australia and also as a Minister for Defence, I rise today to pay tribute to the life of an extraordinary Australian, an extraordinary Western Australian who served our nation with such great distinction and honour in all aspects of his life. Former Governor-General, Major General the Honourable Michael Jeffrey, AO, AC, CVO, MC. General Jeffrey was born to humble beginnings in a small outback town of Wooloona in my own home state in Western Australia. And he described his upbringing as never luxurious but happy. Later, he would go on to say that the earliest years are the most important in framing a person's life. This is no truer than of Michael Jeffrey himself. His mother, Edna, was a nurse, and his father, Phil, was a stockman and a miner who served during World War II. Their shared commitment to their family, their community and their nation shaped everything young Michael would go on to do in his lifetime. At 16, he entered the Royal Military College Duntroon, marking the start of a long and a very distinguished career of military and civilian service. Early on, General Jeffrey served in a number of units, including in the Special Air Services Regiment. In 1962, he posted to Malaya, serving with the 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the Royal Australian Regiment, followed by a secondment in Borneo with the British SAS. From 1966 to 1969, General Jeffrey served in Papua New Guinea with 1st Battalion, the Pacific Island Regiment. And while there, he married his wife, Marlena, who he often and very fondly referred to as his teammate. After PNG, General Jeffrey deployed to Vietnam with the 8th Battalion. During this tour, he was awarded the Military Cross and the South Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. In 1976, he returned home to Perth to assume command of the SASR. He was then promoted to Colonel and became the first Director of Army Special Action Forces. And for his service in this role, he was appointed a member of the Order of Australia. He also headed Australia's National Counter-Terrorism Coordination Authority, after which he commanded the 1st Mechanised and Airborne Brigade in Holdsworthy in Sydney. In 1986, he was promoted to Major General and commanded the 1st Division. And on having a look at his service records, I'm sure back then, if we'd had a corps or army group, he would certainly have gone on to command those two. In 1988, he was appointed an officer of the Order of Australia for his services to the Army. And in 1989, he served as the Assistant Chief of the General Staff Logistics. And as a logistician myself, I know that all wise Army commanders understand the importance of logistics. In January 1990, General Jeffrey became Deputy Chief of the General Staff, and only a year later, he was appointed Assistant Chief of the General Staff for Materiel, and he was responsible for managing 600 Army acquisition and construction projects worth then over $3 billion. 
And it was not long after this final Army appointment, Major General Michael Jeffrey retired from full-time service, and he commenced the next chapter of his life of leadership and service to our nation. In 1993, he became the 28th Governor of Western Australia. In his seven years in the role, his humility, his energy, his passion for causes and his dedication to his home state shone through. And so it was no surprise when in 2003 Prime Minister John Howard asked him to serve his nation yet again, this time as Australia's 24th Governor-General. During his Governor-Generalship, Michael Jeffrey continued his own, uh, with his own stamp of leadership. He did that with integrity, with discipline, with compassion and with strength of character to his core. General Jeffrey was a devoted father, husband and grandfather, and he cherished the support of his family throughout his life of service. I extend my deepest sympathies to Marlena and his family for their great loss to our nation. Their loss is certainly all of our loss. Thank you. I ask honourable senators to join in a moment of silence to signify assent to the motion. The motion is carried. I thank senators.